Palmer's picks. This month, Tom Palmer Jr. looks at Ted McKeever. I enjoy Ted McKeever's work a lot. I think he's a very unique talent. Someone you might classify almost like in the Mike Mignola world in terms of he's working for semi-mainstream genre books, but nobody else's art looks like his. No, totally one of a kind, man. When we were talking pro wrestling stuff and his name came up beforehand, the best name that I could come up with was, was Raven. Super good worker, but quirky in his uh, delivery. Wow, I didn't even think about a, a wrestling equivalent of Ted McKeever. I don't even know where I would begin with that. Very interesting. Long career. Yes, and, and highly respected. So this is one of his first books. Um, basically, Tom Palmer goes through what he's done up to this point, and he did several uh, contained series, original works. So Transit was one of his first books. Um, Eddie Current, one of his early books. I'm not sure which one actually came out first, but Eddie Current was a 12-issue miniseries, maxi-series, and the conceit was it takes place over 12 hours. And this is a fun one to, to look at because his style changes quite a bit. 12 issues is quite a run for a young cartoonist. You, you see the examples of this with, with all these guys of this era, man, because like Guy Davis did Baker Street, and you just watch his art go, grow in leaps and freaking bounds. James O'Barr, same thing. Pretty accomplished, though, you know, at a very early stage. Graphically, all this stuff works. You know, it looks good, easy to read and follow. We'll skip ahead to what the is, end. What is Mad Dog Graphics? I, I'm not familiar with the company. I don't know them either. They're out of Hollywood, California. This is dated 1988, but I, I don't know. I feel like they've done a couple things, but I don't know what else. Classic black and white boom stuff, man. The Turtles have hit, so the Hollywood guys are going to start uh, generating movie promo stuff. Yeah, he shows up around 86, so it's it's right in line with that black and white That's explosion. That's incredible right there. Yeah, one of the things I think of with Ted McKeever is that ink line. Mm -hmm. it, I don't know, it's still a little bit controlled here, but what you point out, you know, some of these hair squiggles, pretty unique, and that's what he comes to do, you know, and I, I wonder what he's even making marks with once he gets further down that path. So you can see very strong black and white. And just amazing shapes, very design-oriented, and when I think of him, I think of just weird proportions. Like, like stuff that I would be too scared to try, but he kind of like lacks a certain self-consciousness of, of uh, trying to, you know, draw these crazy designy forms. All right, so one thing with uh, McKeever that's unusual considering his style is so unique and kind of out there is he does a lot of work with, with Marvel and with DC. Even though he's not being trained to take over some monthly book and one of their licensed characters, he's still finding color work doing his own vision, writing, drawing, coloring this himself for Epic. This is dated 1991, and this is Metropole, and you're starting to see those thicker lines, that more abstract line work that, that I think of as characteristic of his work, you know, doing these textures. You aren't seeing this in other comics. Then this, this is even a color palette that's really, really beautiful. Um, is he working with a colorist on this? No, he's doing his own coloring. That's incredible. He did a book in between this and Eddie Current called Plastic Forks. Yes. That he paints the color in. So, you know, that, that was always part of his... Well, I guess it wasn't for Eddie Current, but I mean, like, color was always a part of his work. You know, he's done a lot of painted work. These, these are like those Midwestern, quote-unquote, hues that you would hear about, like, with... with uh, even like Chris Ware. I was going to say, like, there are some similarities to Chris Ware's color palette. You know, if you took Chris Ware and crossed it with Watchmen, where they're using a lot of the secondary colors, you might get something that looks like this. And still keeping with those unusual, like, character shapes and designs. This is a really fun series, in my opinion. Um, it takes place in kind of a post... A post... Uh, I want to say apocalyptic, but it's not. It's more like the bi the biblical... Revelations. Like plague or something. Yeah, yeah, the end right? times. And uh, speaking of Mike Mignola, he actually does a backup in three of these where he brings Eddie Current back. So you can really see this line work. Like, I don't know exactly what he's drawing some of these lines with. You know what that looks like? It looks like, uh, it looks like a blown up uh, Xerox. It's very textural. Um, I was always interested in cities. You know, I grew up in, the, in a rural area, so cities always held a certain mystery to them yes and that's what this book is this was a big one for me of just thinking of city as setting and it was a different version of city than what you're seeing in things like the marvel universe so this is mike mignola you know early 90s probably before dracula that we've talked about 
but coming in strong with it, spotting the blacks. Very iconic kind of compositions. And it's written by McKeever. So and colored by him. So we could say that McKeever, he might not be everybody's taste, but he is a cartoonist's cartoonist. Double-edged sword. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a very fair assessment. Yeah, double-edged sword. You're not going to make. Uh, you're not going to become a, a, a billionaire, but uh, you're going to have respect of your peers at, at the very least. One of the first things I ever ordered from pre-orders, like advanced comics and previews, was Ted McKeever's Metropole Collected Edition. I probably ordered it because I read this Palmer's Picks. That's awesome. And then got this. This is 1995 is the publication date. And it's a black and white reprint of all of the Metropole stuff. So like 15 issues worth. And this is where it really shines. You know, his depiction of this city, especially the city at night. It's just grotesque. And then all of these textures and demonic creatures. You know, it's basically these cyborg angels battling against these demons that are taking over with people stuck in the middle. And this whole city gets walled off. So they're just fighting for survival and, and trying to stay alive and... Escape is almost not even an option, you know, it's just survival. Really good nightmarish kind of stuff. Cool voice. Weren't other comics like this. I think there still aren't. Show off that spine. Other comics like this. That's awesome right there, man. And then Tom is just pointing pointing the uh, nubile young reader to the body of work that McKeever has put out so far. Yeah, and up to this point, like we said, it's transit, eddy current, Plastic Forks, Metropole. There's a couple of listings of anthology work, like A1, where he collaborates with Dave Gibbons. Kind of interesting. I don't have this issue, or else I would have pulled it, but there's um, a story that Dave Gibbons writes, which must be an early writing effort of his, and McKeever draws, and then there's one that McKeever writes and Dave Gibbons draws. So that A1 first issue might be worth it just for those two stories. He would go on to do... Um, you know, I mentioned Marvel and DC. He took over Doom Patrol with Rachel Pollock after Grant Morrison's run ended. He did uh, a Spider-Man Tangled Web at Marvel. That probably would have been late 90s, early 2000s. He did three Elseworld stories that were based on like German expressionist films like Superman Met Metropolis, mm -hmm. um, Batman Nosferatu. Oh, that's awesome. And Wonder Woman, The Blue Angel, I want to say. The Blue Amazon, based sort of based on The Blue Angel. So... Those were big square bound books with DC's big three characters, which is crazy to think of the guy who's drawing like angels and demons killing everybody in a walled off city ends up getting to play with the biggest uh, icons that DC has. <laughs> so Ted McKeever, one of the alternative guys that I found early on that I kind of fell in love with and expanded what I thought of comics, especially comics art. You know, this was a, a long way from Homage Studios. That's true.